Thank you so much for watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. Oh my goodness, are we excited to get to hang out and be with you. And I want to encourage you with a very helpful verse. And this is probably one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible because it speaks to us about our desires. I used to want God to give me everything I ever wanted. And I realized that sometimes my desires were kind of shady, right? Less legitimately the truth. I think it's the same for you as well. But I like this verse. It's Philippians 2.13. And it says, God is at work in you both to will, that means have the desire, and to do according to his good pleasure. So my prayer for you today, and I pray this for myself as well, is that God would shape my desires so that they would reflect God's will. I can't assume that everything I want is automatically what God wants to do for me. That's kind of topsy-turvy. That's the car before the horse. Instead, if I ask God, God, deal with my desires, refine them, adjust them, conform them to your will, then, then it makes it very easy and smooth to walk in the spirit. So I encourage you, hop on the phone. You're struggling with desires that might not be healthy, might be kind of destructive or even deceptive to you. Hop on the phone. We want to pray for you that God would work on your desires so that they would conform to God's will. Get on the website. We love to pray for you. And we have one of the coolest guests in the world with us today, Joan Hunter. Yay, thank it's you. so awesome thank being you. back here again. And Love I think you guys. the hottest guest because you bring <laughs> such hot truth. How, you how warm our hearts. Yes, healing oil. Now, here's the new mm -hmm. book, not new mm -hmm. book, but a yeah, very powerful yeah, book. Yeah. Probably one of the favorites we ever have. I agree. And this is what I love about this. This is healing for the whole man. You know, I think about those 10 lepers and how they were all healed, but one came back and gave thanks to Jesus mm -hmm. and he was made whole. Mm -hmm. yes. And I know that we need wholeness, mm -hmm. spirit, soul, and body. What an important book this is. It really is. Oh. Uh, in this book, it has about 200 pages of diseases, what they are and how to pray for them and the probable root cause. Now, a root cause is what may have opened up the door for the sickness. This is an area that I really, really do a lot of teaching on because why did I get this disease? Probably unforgiveness, you know, like arthritis. Well, you know, that situation has been eating at you, okay? The situation has been eating at you and been eating at your bones, mm -hmm. okay? And, uh, but it, what it does is just so simple. Uh, I've had many people that have gotten this book and, and they were reading it and they're going, okay, now this is about high blood pressure. And then all of a sudden they're going, my heart feels better. And then they would take their blood pressure every day and they haven't had any blood pressure issues, nor have they had to take the medication for high blood pressure because it was only on demand. And so they got totally healed just by reading the book themselves. I had one lady that was healed of blindness. Um, oh, she wow. wasn't blind, blind, obviously, because you can't read a book blind, but she was, you know, had a really hard time reading and she's like this. And then she got distracted and she was looking over there and then she went back to reading the book and then she got distracted again. And she's like, I have clarity of vision over there. I don't have to look like this, you know, or be right in somebody's face. She instantly healed while reading about the book, you know, reading about getting your eyes healed. That's the anointing that's in this book. It's not the words that Joan has written, but it's the anointing that is in my life that is in this book and seeing people transformed. I know people that take the book and they'll read it and they'll put their hand here and they'll do, okay, now I do this and then this and then this and then the person is totally completely healed. It's just amazing. So this book really works where you live. Yes. So you know, all pastors of us, have it in their pulpit too. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us live with things we don't need to live with. And we just think, oh, how can I say it? We just endure it because we think we're supposed to have it. Folks, everybody needs this book. You need to get several of these books and pass them on. Healing the whole man. I'm telling you that's spirit, soul, and body. I know this book well. I have used this book. I know what it'll do in you, but I wouldn't be selfish. I wouldn't just call in and get it for myself. I'd call in and get one at least, one at least for someone else, maybe two or three, or maybe five or 10 for a Bible study or a Sunday school class. And of course, we love to pray for you. So leave your prayer request at the same time and get your book.
You know, in there you have a chapter uh, titled Ministry to Children. What does that mean as far as healing the whole man? Because I, like I take this and I'm like, okay, this is about me and healing me and, and making me whole and well. So when you talk about ministry to children, what's that supposed to be about? I'm really inclined to show you what I'm talking about, but I don't know if the cameras would like it right. or not. Uh, just do a wide shot for me here. And, uh, but like, can you imagine having a child come up to you and it's like, okay, what can I pray with you about? Now, that child may have been abused by a male or female, bigger person, and they're freaking out, okay? So in that chapter, I talk about ministering to a child, getting down on their level. Now, that was even kind of like, whoa, for you. But imagine a three, four, five-year-old child. Right. And I mean, because especially Sarah and I, we're really tall. You're tall, but we're really tall. Right. And that can be scary. So you just get down you know, with the child, I'll put them on a chair or I'll sit down on a chair or sit down on the platform area, you know, and, and just like, okay, what do you need Jesus to do? And what that does, it takes, because we don't know what's happened to the child. No. We have no idea what's happened to the child or what their prayer need is, but it causes them to feel, to feel comfortable instead of this giant mm -hmm. person that I've never seen before is going to lay, is going to touch me. You know, right. and so that area and then instead of and, and it was so cute because I've had people go, uh, you know, and, and for the stomach, we know it's a stomach. But if a child has a problem, it has a problem in its tummy. OK, right, right. so there's a few words that we need to change that we can that the child will, will identify with better. So let me ask you this, and this is I'm going rogue on you a little bit. OK, okay. So, I, I rogue gunned everybody around. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. So that's not all bad. <laughs> And the, this this chapter it kind of talks a little bit about dealing with children, not necessarily that you know or not like my children, but the principles as they relate to, they're still the same as it relates to our children. Mm -hmm. So case in point, if we have a two or three year old toddler and, and, and especially, I guess I'm saying this, when we have spiritual truths and spiritual content, we want to be conscientious that that little two or three year old doesn't always have the same vocabulary. Um, and when we start throwing heavy duty religious words mm -hmm. into them, and then we're, we're also tall and we're like kind of towering over them. And there are kids well, still. Ask a five-year-old kid, do you want to be saved? <laughs> saved from, from what? what? Is there a fire? Right, right. They don't know what that means. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need to, to make it so that they can understand us. Sure, and so coming down on their level, Mm -hmm. And I do the same thing. I'll, I'll kneel, I'll get down on my knees, sit down right next to them, put them on my knee, come and talk to me. I want to hear what's on your mind and, and getting into what their, their mindset and their thinking. But I think this is true because healing a whole man and thinking of our children and them walking whole and well, why do we wait until they're 25, until they're 35, until they're 40, and we've got, and then we have to do remedial work, mm -hmm. right? Instead of, teaching them all along, walking in health and wholeness mm -hmm. and doing that even as a little kid. So how could you work this into our kids? And you have grandchildren. I have, yeah. I have four grown so daughters I went and, rogue, and at this point, seven grandchildren and I'm yeah. believing God for more too. So yeah. how do you work that out in your grandkids? Um, I pray with them, you know, and some of them uh, live local, some of them don't. And so we can communicate whether through the iPhone or through iChat and I'll put my hand on them. And I can talk with them and communicate with them and, and put my hand on the, the screen and they get healed, which is like so awesome. And, and even going back and seeing some of the grandkids towering over them until they really, you know, because if they're not around you every day, they're, you know, they, they just, you know, they need to kind of get reacquainted with you. And, um, but I don't tower over them, you know, and I'll just sit down, put them on my lap and we'll have that kind of a conversation. And that's what's so important, you know, is to, is to get down to their level. And, you know, I come across as a mom and a grandma, you know, whereas a, this is especially needed in the area of men because, you know, um, men don't always come across as a dad and a grandpa. Whereas mm -hmm. I just have that grandma effect. I don't know. Kids in the airport, they go, 
it's like, there goes grandma. You know, they want me to hold them. And I don't even know who these kids are. You know, they're just passing me in the stroller. But it's, it's a grandma anointing, however you want to, you know, term it. But it's, it's very important that we learn how to pray for our children, how to communicate to our children. And, uh, and this book really helps you in that area. And to see your kids healed. Right. And I would suggest, too, coaching our kids to walk in wholeness and health. Oh, and pray for are, other kids. Right. And so that they mm -hmm. receive and they're like, okay, wait a second. I don't have to put up with this stuff. I am a whole well person in Jesus Christ. So I live and walk in this stuff. So this is a whole family thing and not just kind of an outlier, you know, exceptional one rogue person, but rather this can be applied and relevant to our whole family and work its way through our family. So hop on the phone, get on the website, grab a whole bunch of these because it's a great resource, a great gift and uh, helps us to live in wholeness and wellness, not only for ourselves, but for our families as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's so simple. It's so simple. And I love what your mother did with me one time. I was really sick and she would call me or I would call her every night and did you have a good day? Well, not so good. Or yeah, this was a good day because mm -hmm. I was just sick, sick. And one day she said, I said, how was your day? I said, it's not a good day. Well, this is your last bad day. So I wrote it down. This is my last bad day. And it was. That's awesome. Oh, and I think getting hold of who Jesus is in wholeness and not, oh, I'm not worthy of it. Or I just wrote it down. Folks, this book will work right where you live, right where your family lives, right where you have loved ones who, who maybe need this desperately, but would never listen to you. So be sure you get the book. Be sure you call in. And this next segment is the best you have ever heard. So stay right there. Joan is not through with you. Neither is the Lord. Are you ready to be set free, restored, and made totally whole? Find the keys you are looking for in Joan Hutter's Healing the Whole Man and Healing the Heart. Yours for a gift of $39 or more. I deal with root causes because you can mow and mow and mow, but until you treat the weeds, those the roots of the weeds, they're gonna come back. This book, along with others of my teachings, deal with getting rid of the roots, getting rid of the magnetism to sickness so that we don't attract sickness. Joan Hunter has personally been healed and set free from the effects of breast cancer, marital betrayal and desertion, financial ruin, and much more. She ministers from the heart to the heart. Within the pages of these books are the keys that God gave Joan to help set you free of the pain of the past. Find triumph for your own life as you enjoy healing the heart and healing the whole man. Call or click to get yours today. this is. This is your miracle day. The truth that you hear, the truth sets you free. And we have Joan Hunter with us, I think with the greatest truth book, because it deals with what the Bible says, and the Bible is truth. But knowing truth sets you free, but it sets you free spirit, soul, and body. Isn't that true? It does, yes. Tell us about that. Well, this, this is a fun book. I really enjoy it. I was just uh, recently in Jamaica and there was a lady that came in and she said, would you sign my book? I, she ordered it through your program several a few years ago and it was just totally just gone and she had used it so much. 
people look to this as a handbook, mm -hmm. a medical handbook. There's hundreds of pages in here, diseases medically what they are in layman's terms. Very simple layman's terms, but it is from a medical dictionary. So it is accurate medically, okay? Then I take the spiritual part and how to pray for that to make sure that everything is taken care of, um, you know, covered in it. Uh, the thing that I was talking about uh, in, in this ministry is I deal with root causes because you can mow and mow and mow, but until you treat the weeds, those the roots of the weeds, they're mm -hmm. going to come back. This book, along with others of my teachings, deal with getting rid of the roots, getting rid of the magnetism to sickness so that we don't attract sickness. Our words can attract sickness. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's flu season. I got to go get my flu shot because I always, I, every year I get the flu or this is my time for sinuses. So I got to go to the store and I got to buy all my stuff for my sinuses, etc. No, you know, don't prepare for the worst. And, uh, you know, how many of you are planning on getting a winter cold, you know, and I, when I was in Russia ministering over there, everybody raised their hand because there was just no option. I said, this is going to be the first year that you're not going to get a cold at, at the winter time because their heat is not near as good as ours. And, um, you know, but they just are programmed and they keep saying, I got to get ready for my winter cold. And one area, and you know, if you've ever heard me before, I talk about trauma. Trauma and stress. Stress produces stress hormone. Stress hormone's responsibility is to destroy the immune system. Uh, medically and statistically, 85% of the people in the United States, probably around the world too, have a compromised immune system. And which means that any sickness that comes by, you get. Now, I... I personally go into a contaminated container several times a week and you're going, well, why do you do that? It's called an airplane. <laughs> you, you have people around you that are coughing up lungs and right. they're sitting right next to you and you're going, oh, thank you, Jesus, that you're, you know, that you have a strong immune system, right. that we can eat any deadly thing and it shall not harm us. We can sit by any sick person, you know, I mean, and I pray with sick people all the time. So, I mean, that's what I do and I never get sick. I have a phenomenal immune system. Now, if I told you just what my next week and a half would be, you would get stressed out just thinking about the responsibilities I have in the next seven days. And I've, I've got probably about eight plane flights, not to mention n numerous times of ministry and teaching and so forth. And you're like, how do you do that? It's got to be God. That's for sure. Nobody can do the schedule that I do unless it's God. But in order to do that, you know, and I think that there's three different time zones, multiple different climates, and not to mention uh, everything else and being around sick people, I have to have a strong immune system. So I have no stress, no trauma effect on my life anymore. And it's very simple on how to get rid of it. Now, in this book, on chap in chapter 12, it talks about the immune system and what do you do to cause the immune system to rise? talks about the electrical and magnetic frequencies uh, in our bodies. And many times people wear magnets. They do this. They have a magnetic mattress, different things like that. And some people say, well, they're of the devil. No, they're not. It's causing your body to get back into the proper magnetic field and range that it needs to be. And but you know, and the reason of that is because with the earthquakes, it's gotten our earth out of off axis. It doesn't have the right magnetic pull to the moon, etc and the sun. And so this has gotten out of kelter. It's not the same as in the Garden of Eden. So we've got to get our bodies on a daily basis back into um, perfect harmony on a daily basis. I take my vitamins every day and I pray over my electrical and magnetic frequencies every day. And then I pray in the name of Jesus. I just speak health and wholeness to my immune system that be strong so I can do all that you've called me to do. In the name of Jesus, I command the electrical and magnetic frequencies in my body to return to perfect harmony and balance. I also, which is not covered in this particular chapter, I pray over my hormones. My hormones at 62 years old, medically, physically impossible, are perfect because I pray over them. In the name of Jesus, I command my hormones to be in perfect harmony and balance in Jesus' name. It goes on to talk about your pH balance. Under a lot of stress, it produces acid, acid reflux, etc. causes all kinds of things like that. And then, um, then you've got um, 
you know, you've got to pray for your, the proper pH balance. If your body is in alignment electrically, magnetically, and your pH balance is perfect, no sickness can stay in your body. I like that part that no sickness can stay in my body. It can may, maybe attack, but it has to go off because of the shield of faith. And then there's another one I want to talk about because this is so exciting, the revelation that I have gotten this uh, about, about a year ago. And that is also in this book. It teaches on prions, P-R-I-O-N-S. A prion in very simple terms is a bad cell eating good cells like cancer, MS, different things like that. Anything that's eating away, arthritis, etc. And so <clears throat> praying for cancer, curse the cancer in the name of Jesus, command it to go, curse every prion associated with it, any damage that the prions or the cancer has caused complete or even medication speak complete health and wholeness and restoration. That's basically the prayer for the cancer. But to go back to a prion, they go, I've never heard of a prion. You can Google a prion. You can read about it in the book. I asked, uh, I did a teaching on that. And I taught about prions and healing schools. And, and so this lady went home and she asked her husband, who is a cell biologist, have you ever heard of a prion? His response, this was so amazing. He says, they are demonic. A, a scientist mm -hmm. says they are demonic. He says, they're the only cell known to man that doesn't have a nucleus. Wow. This is amazing. Huh. And that's, and I talk about prions in here, but that's a recent development over the last year. And they don't, doctors don't know where, or scientists both don't know where they come from or how to get rid of them. If there's no cell nucleus, if there's no cell, no, so no nucleus, that's what guides it. Right. What's guiding it? It's demonic. Wow. And so, and the doctors can't get rid of it. They don't know what to do. So God is the only one that can do it. Medically, they say every body actually has some prions in it. And don't be afraid. Just say in the name of Jesus, I curse any prions in my body. I command them to be gone. See, it's not fear. This is knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is healing for you to walk out your healing. You can Google it. And even some of the main things will tell you as you look it up that it's demonic. This is on the computer. The world, the medically are saying <clears throat> that prions are demonic. That's just amazing. Mm. It's amazing. It's time we got rid of them. Put your hand on your heart or in your belly, wherever you want to put it. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I send the word of healing to each person watching right now. I curse every root of trauma and effect of stress on their body. I speak health and wholeness into their entire digestive system. I curse every, every, every prion in their body. It is commanded to die, be discarded, no more in any one of our lives ever again in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So good. You know, Joan, one of the things I love about this book is this last half of it, more than half of it, is, is a continuous alphabetical list of all these different maladies, you know, high cholesterol. I looked in here, there's a section on headaches, there's depression, hemorrhoids, like serious hernia, mental illness, mononuclear. I mean, you go through this, all kinds of stuff, restless leg syndrome, pul pulmonary edemia, stuttering, suicide. I mean, I love this really extensive list of all these maladies and also how to pray and really move in God's presence, power and healing to overcome those things. So thanks for this. And I encourage you to get on the phone, get on the website. Thanks for joining us today. We're so oh, glad to have you oh, with us. Well, thank we you. appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, we Remember, it. grab your book, get on the website, get on our, our call us. We want to get this book to you today. Are you ready to be set free, restored and made totally whole? Find the keys you are looking for in Joan Hutter's Healing the Whole Man and Healing the Heart. Yours for a gift of $39 or more. I deal with root causes because you can mow and mow and mow, but until you treat the weeds, those the roots of the weeds, they're going to come back. This book, along with others of my teachings, deal with getting rid of the roots, getting rid of the magnetism to sickness so that we don't attract sickness. Joan Hunter has personally been healed and set free from the effects of breast cancer, marital betrayal and desertion, 
financial ruin, and much more. She ministers from the heart to the heart. Within the pages of these books are the keys that God gave Joan to help set you free of the pain of the past. Find triumph for your own life as you enjoy healing the heart and healing the whole man. Call or click to get yours today. Phnom Penh, Cambodia has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Nightcare, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Nightcare from Saving Moses. The Bible says healing is the bread of the children. So today, I want you to eat some bread, bread of healing. Where do you need healing in your body? Let's believe God for that because it really is our bread. It was purchased in the atonement. So we need to claim what the Bible says we can have. So I'm going to ask you to put your hand on any area of your body that you need healing. I, need, I love to pray for the sick. So put your hand, it's on your, you say, I have 10 things. Put your hand on top of your head. We'll just believe for everything. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I send the word into this body that heals it, delivers it from every destruction. And in Jesus' name, I speak wholeness. Amen. Now, I believe you've received, but you need to act in faith. Don't look for your sickness. Look for your miracle and stand in faith for it. This is very important. Now, this is the way I stand. I not only stand for healing, but health. Because when I look at Jehovah Rapha, it has to do with health. And Moses received the revelation of that name. And he lived to 120. His eye didn't get dim. His natural force was not abated. Why? Because he knew that there was healing and health for him. And he lived in it. So why don't you just call in right now and say, hey, I am believing for healing in my body. Name the place. Don't take a long time and say, I am believing for health. And maybe you have a loved one on your heart who needs healing or who needs health. Then give us those names and we're going to pray and just say, Marilyn told me to call in today for healing and health. And we're going to stand in faith and see great miracles. Yeah. 